Hello and welcome again. So now we are moving toward the security architecture. So we need to see what are the contemporary control system architecture. So due to the introduction of the IT components in the control system domains, security problems arise or we can say security attacks are face increased. So con increasing what are the uh, basic uh, driving factors for this uh, increase in security lapses or security problems we can say. So increase in dependency on automation and control system. So if you go back into the history, so uh, relay logics were moved on the pneumatic valves or pneumatic uh, systems. Some relay logics were moved manually, some valves were controlled manually. So, but thus we incorporated this IT components in our control system. The ease of operating these devices increased so uh, hence dependency on automation and control systems also increased so insecurity again again uh, we, we we when once we generated so much amount of data we started connecting or sending it to other sites also to uh, to increase more ease of access to fetch more data insights from the collected data so that gave uh, insecure connectivity to the external networks also we often started giving our systems remotely to the vendors so that they can troubleshoot they can see inside our systems also uses of technology with known vulnerability so uh, once we were so much dependent on the technology even the vulnerabilities were discovered we were in no position to remove that technology because or stop using that technology because we were so dependent on those technologies uh, or might be we can say like in some plans if we are still using Windows XP so that is the dependence we cannot upgrade Windows XP to 2010 Windows and uh, run the same PLC same software and same IO cards on the system because those systems hardware are designed to work with the XP system so we cannot upgrade complete plant in one go so this call that we are still using some uh, technologies with known vulnerabilities no business case for cyber security in control systems there because there is no return on investment for we cannot see uh, the uh, tangible return on investment so that's why there is no business case control system technologies have limited security and if they do the vendor supplied security capabilities are generally only enabled it administrator is aware of that capability but uh, if we do or if we add some third party securities also that can void the warranty and uh, support by vendors also so that need to be tested released by the OEMs only then only we can say that these security uh, technologies are well uh, tested and implemented in our system. Now next is the control system communications protocols are absent of security functionality. So if we see RS232 serial communication there we, we cannot implement a cyber security on uh, the serial communications or if it is a OPC DA then it's a really it's a based on DCOM communications and that already has too much vulnerability so some protocols which are designed they do not have the security we cannot add some certificates we cannot add uh, ssh exchange or or uh, secure transport layer communications that that is not possible to do with those protocols considerable amount of open source information is available regarding control system configuration and operation so uh, these are some of the weaknesses or areas where we need to pay attention to mitigate the gaps what are existing now now let's move to one of the example of the ICS network architecture what we often see and this is the one of the recommended architecture we can say so basically the this is called integrated architecture so it is based on the Purdue level and it depicts an integrated architecture that includes connection from uh, external sources such as corporate LAN, so peer sites, vendor sites and internet. The model comes from the International Society of Automation and provides insight into the widely accepted Purdue model of the control. So, so this architecture I think uh, if you remember your, our Purdue model lesson, so similar type of architecture was there also. So th this is a much uh, briefed and much detailed. So we can see in this level we have uh, field devices, sensors, we have field devices, sensors, again level 0, then level 1 we have controllers, we have uh, then local HMI. And if someone asks you that uh, where are the switches, so switches are the called as conduits and they are in between. So you can see that in the be between these are, these are the switches. So you can keep switches in level 1 or level 2 or wherever near near to the networks, whatever is there. Then we can say this is a cell area zone, then there are another levels like manufacturing, 
manufacturing control center processing line in level 3 we have uh, systems like database io server historian in, in this level then in dmz uh, we have patch management server historian remote access then a firewall here we have firewall here we have firewall here so all these firewalls are helping in segmentation as well as uh, monitoring the traffic what is going in and out of that level then we have uh, uh, enterprise zone we have internet dmz zone and all are segregated with the firewalls so we can keep uh, um, the memory of this thing that what type of servers we can place in each uh, level depending on the business use case depending on the type of server and why why this levels are created so basically this levels are created by the need that each of this level have a similar set of cyber security control so if this is a hmi zone or it is a local hmi land we can put like application allow listing here we can add ids uh, here we can add antivirus here and that's done so these three type of controls we can do for everything if this is a field controller definitely we cannot install all any application so what we can do we can do a cabinet locking we can do physical access controls if this is a field level that definitely we cannot keep all these devices in cabinet so sometimes we need to put tagging we need to do asset inventory asset management this type of things if this is enterprise zone all these are almost uh, it type of systems so you can put edr there we can put uh, UEBA so latest technology you can put it there because they they are not totally dependent on the control system control losses so even if uh, web server gets down there won't be a impact on any communication happening between field controller to local HMI so this is how levels are there so basically our standard architecture should look like this and uh, then let's go to understand what are the architectural zones so we can see here uh, we have uh, zones here so this is the IOT part and this is the IT part of the of the architecture so in order to create layer defense one must have clear understanding of how all technology fits together and where all the interconnectivity uh, resides so dividing common control system architectures into zone can assist organization in creating clear boundaries in order to effectively apply multiple layer of defense so if you want to apply multiple layer of defense you need to clearly identify your zones first so how to achieve network segmentation is vital in creating architectural zones also so basically we have here four zones we can see enterprise security zone so what does enterprise security zone uh, it includes the connectivity to internet uh, peer locations and backup for remote off-site facilities so enterprise network connectivity we can see in level 5 it is there as well as the business networks that include corporate communications email servers domain name systems and IT business uh, systems level 4 so all these comes into the enterprise zone so like we saw in the previous slide so this 4 and 5 this comes into the enterprise zone so so in 4 what type of servers are the domain controller web servers so this, this comes into the enterprise zone so a wide variety of risk exists in zone because this is connected to uh, internet and uh, this zone is considered as untrusted because this is connected to the external network as well. Now second is the manufacturing zone. So this zone is level 3 which contains the area of connectivity where a vast majority of monitoring and control takes place. So in level 3 what is there? In level 3 we can see we have production application server, HMI, database, IO server, historian. So we can say that. Uh, operational support and engineering management devices are located in this zone uh, along with data equation server historian the manufacturing zone is central to the operation of end devices and provides required connectivity to enterprise zone if some some connectivity needs from top to bottom this zone will provide all those connectivity the priority of this area is high so risk are associated is directly connectivity to any external system or network we cannot connect directly this system to external uh, uh, system so we need a DMZ here which will filter and monitor all the activities what is happening here. Now next area is the cell zone, cell security zone. So cell security zone contains systems used for local or remote uh, area control level 2 devices such as field located HMIs, PLCs and their controls, so level 1 and basic input output devices such as actuators here in this area such as actuators and sensors the priority of these zones is very high and these are the areas where the control functions affect physical end devices so 
basically uh, each of these zones whatever we studies requires a unique security focus so peel peel the onion analysis we can say so peel the onion analysis shows that intruder trying to affect a critical infrastructure would most likely to go after the core control domains contra containing level 3 and below so whoever wants to enter your network they want to access this area so they need to peel whatever security you have provided here they need to first peel this layer of the onion then second layer of the onion then third layer of the onion so that way we need to create the multiple layer of the cyber security so that it, it look like an onion so that is about the zones uh, dmz so let's discuss something about the dmz dmz is sometimes sometimes referred as the perimeter network so you can put multiple dmz's also whatever is your perimeter exposed area so there you can put a dmz is a physical and logical sub network that acts as intermediary for connected security devices they avoid exposure to the larger untrusted network so dmz whatever it will allow from here to expose that will be only exposed so an external intruder had direct access only to the dmz not not inside it so uh, that's about the dmz dmz is a must like uh, we need to implement it in uh, our architecture it gives a very well uh, security so uh, we need to always try to achieve this type of architecture wherever we are designing whether it is a small architecture big architecture we should go for this recommended architecture design and it will give a good level of security and uh, also visualization to the designer as well as uh, uh, engineers so this is the recommended architecture and i think we have enough discussed on security architecture let's move to the next topic thank you